Hi everybody, welcome to my Pickle Road studio. I just got a book yesterday from Leisure Arts that I had to share with you. It's called Tried and True Renewal. I thought it was a terrific, terrific book. And so I went through it and I took pictures of all the quilts for you to see and I want to share them with you. Now this is a book that takes classic quilt designs and then they make them with updated fabric. Honestly, when I go around the country and I go seeing, you know, one quilt show after another, or I see, you know, people are showing their quilts at their quilt meetings, their show and tells, I have to tell you, no matter how hard we try to do something different, unique, and wonderful, for me, believe it or not, it's the traditional quilts that always steal the show. So let me show you some of these quilts from the Tried and True Renewal, and I hope you like them as much as I do. Now take a look at this one. This is uh, called the a broken dishes quilt. Now, what I love about this is that it's a really, really simple block, and it really is a pretty quilt. And um, these are made with small scale prints, but what I also like about it is that it is really just a, uh, a scrappy quilt that anybody could do. Now, gosh, table topper. Gotta tell you, I'm not fond of table toppers. I think they're a waste of time. If I'm gonna sit at my sewing machine, I want a quilt. I know a lot of you like them. This isn't my favorite in the book, but it's my only non-favorite in the book. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. This is called the Wild Goose Chase Quilt, and this is the one that was on the cover, and it is beautiful. It's monochromatic, it's very modern, it's really beautiful, and I, I just, just love this quilt. Uh, that little hint of salmon in there with that, that brown uh, really works for me. Now, who doesn't love the Lone Star Log Cabin quilt? I mean, it's like two classic blocks. The Lone Star and the Log Cabin. Now, any idiot can make a Log Cabin. And the Lone Star is a little more difficult, but um, I think that it goes pretty easily. It's a very classic uh, quilt block, so you should probably learn how to do it. I love a feathered star. It's a little more work because of all those half square triangles. But if you use something like triangles on a roll or thangles, you can pull this off uh, pretty quickly. And uh, one thing I really like about the, this quilt too is the border, which is also a feathered star or a piece of a feathered star. And I like that uh, effect a lot. For me, it's all about the borders. And they also give a pillow sham uh, uh, pattern in here as well. Now the Lemoyne star quilt, very pretty. You can do that out of anybody basics, anybody's basics line. Mark Lipinski's Home for Northcott Elements would look perfect in this. As a matter of fact, all Mark Lipinski's fabrics would look great for all of these quilts. But I want you to consider Elements for this particular one because of the rainbow and the selection that we have. Now, the Lemoyne Star Table Topper uh, is in this book. Uh, not my favorite. I don't, again, don't really like table toppers. What about this triple Irish chain? It's only done in a few colors, but boy, do I like it. It has a real Amish look, although it's not. It's updated, and uh, there's a lot of room there for doing machine quilting, if that's your thing. The Bachelor's Puzzle Quilt, you know, very patriotic. It's very summery. That red, white, and blue really shines, and I love that. The Trip Around the World Quilt. First of all, I love pastels. This is another one that's done with solids and with prints. And this would be great. You know, the solids, Mark Lipinski's Home for Northcott Elements, and then mix them with your scraps of uh, similar colors and you have yourself a really great quilt. Pineapple quilt, elegant, elegant, elegant. I love the way they use the jewel tones. This particular quilt in this book is scrappy, but I love the way they use the jewel tones in this. Now my next one is a favorite. It's the Sawtooth Quilt. And what I like about it is they use just a cream and a white, or an off-white and a cream, to make the Sawtooth. And there's nothing more classy. It's just beautiful, it really speaks to me. It's light and airy, and it also has a lot of space for you to do your quilting. Now the Square Dance Quilt, not, not really my favorite. I, I, I probably wouldn't have chosen these colors for it, but it's a very nice quilt as well, and it's a great way to use up your stash. The Burgoyne uh, Surrounded Quilt, which is this red and white quilt, is beautiful. I love red and white. I love two-color quilts anyway. This would look great. Blue and white, red and white, yellow and white, orange and white, pink and white. It's a great classic design, and it's not a hard quilt to do, and uh, I think you should do it.
Now this book, this tried and true, uh, renewed, is only uh, $21.95, which is a real bargain for the amount of quilts you get in here. Again, it's classic. You can make all these quilts very easily. They're not difficult, and I think you should do it. Now I'm going to say goodbye, but before I go, I want you to go to your newsstand, and I want you to go pick up a copy of my new magazine, Mark Lipinski's Christmas 365. It's loaded with projects and recipes and collections and antiques and novel and anything having to do with Christmas. So pick it up. It's worth your trip. And if you can't find it in your local stores, your Barnes & Noble, Borders, whatever, email me at pickleroadstudio at aol.com and I'll find out where it is. Or you can email me at christmas365 at me.com and I'll get back to you as to where you can pick it up. And also, just go to the manager of the store, the magazine people, and tell them you want to order it. That's it, Cupcakes. Talk with you soon for our next review.